I'm gonna be real, boys. I have not pulled in three months at Honkai Star Rail. Every single time I pull, I make sure to watch Brax's videos before I pull. Because this is the best guide channel on YouTube. I have 200 pulls. I think I actually want to lose the 50-50. And to be honest, I'm actually considering getting a Eidolon because her E1 Eidolon is so insane. But let's see how insane she actually is. Because I've also heard that she sucks. I've also heard if you have E2 Bronya, there's no reason to have a Ruan Mei. I feel like that has to be cap. I've seen her kit. It looks so broken. Let's find out. Guys, today we're going to be talking about Ruan Mei. Fuck. What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Ruan Mei. Ru huh. Ruan Mei. That's who we're talking about. Have you ever looked at a character and went, dang, that character would look really good with a semi-visible midriff? Yeah, well, Star <laughs> Rail delivered and keeps uh, delivering. Honestly, yeah. a lot of things about anime gacha games. Dude, the amount of people shit-talking her design too is insane. They're like, oh, dude, all the Lofu characters look the same. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going for like a cohesive like dress type for each character from each zone i mean that's what makes sense to me i don't know why people are complaining it's pissed me off but i don't really know how to describe ruan may in any other way than pissing me off and today i'm gonna go over how to play and build her so you can make her your favorite supporting unit if you enjoy these types of videos as always make sure to like i just want her to be usable with suck, kafka and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more my name is if she's Crash usable Jones, with kafka talk about ruin pull 100 Ru ruan may Ru god damn She absolutely is. I've seen no guide Ruan saying to use her with Kafka. standard and breaks the ice for the limited five-star Harmony characters. Get it? Because she's ice and she's the break-focused character. I'll see myself out. Ruan Mei is, in truth, pretty broken. I have no idea how they just let this character release in her current state because the amount of buffs she gives makes your team basically Dude. five characters instead of four. So... Every Reddit thread. She's terrible. YouTube guide. She's insane. It's just, it's like whiplash with these guides. That way I just, that way I just close it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Her skill is called String Sing Slow. slow I, I, did I just have a stroke? It's a yes. three turn buff that increases all teammates' damage bonus and weakness break efficiency. The damage buff is 32% at talent level 10, and trust me, you'll want to level it to 10. 32% is insane. Is 50% and unchanging. And I think we max the talent immediately. Different from break effect. I think weakness we triple crown efficiency her. affects the toughness bar that you deplete when you attack. So, for example, if you break 30 toughness with a skill, you're actually breaking 45 toughness with 50% break efficiency. That's this so makes good. enemies significantly easier and gives some extra damage mitigation since they'll be broken more often. And something else that's huge about extending break and that probably not a lot of people are going to even talk about is that when enemies have toughness bar, they take 90% of their possible damage. When they're broken, they're taking the full 100%. So is that true? Breaks, I've never heard, heard of that. Bigger damage window and thus more damage. Your goal is to break enemies and God, I wish she'd break my heart so I could move on. Now that 32% damage bonus isn't the only damage bonus she gives because with one of her major traces, she gains six percent more damage bonus for every 10 percent break effect she has over 120 percent up to a maximum of 36 percent damage bonus so in total with an optimal run may build at 180 percent break effect you get 68 percent damage bonus on all allies how the with this one the muff counts down at the beginning of her turn and 68 percent going skill point positive with that said a faster run may isn't always better since her ultimate lasts two of her own turns and that can lead to you losing her ult faster in exchange for skill points now what does her ultimate do well have you ever wanted to penetrate enemies in honkai star rail Actually, yeah don't answer that i've been on twitter before her ultimate deploys a two-turn field that decreases My at the may will probably turn, have uh, 160 every character speed. on your team resistance penetration at level 10 it's 25 percent penetration which is absolutely insane. For reference, Locha E6 lowers enemy resistances by 20%. So you're taking a broken E6 of a 5-star and just putting it in a character's base kit. We have a few different ways to lower enemy defense, but we don't have many ways to lower resistance for all types. True. Getting teammates' resistance penetration is essentially the same thing. Now, resistance penetration and lowering enemy resistances is different from lowering their defense. Defense is a different stat from the resistances that they have. Ruan Mei doesn't lower defense, but there are other characters Jesus. that do. Defense Christ. and resistance are different stats. They both get a ton of value individually, and when you stack them together, enemies will take more damage than Tingyu. Not only that, but when the field <laughs> is up and you hit an enemy, they get okay. a flower above their head that makes it so that when enemies... Okay, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming, okay, you can run Jing Liu with Pela, with Bronya, with Ruan Mei, and zero cycling memory of chaos is going to become a joke the thing that i'm wondering now is i don't understand how ruan may is doing something to enable two type of dps like i don't understand why she allows two different dps to exist on the same field i don't get that at all cover from having their weakness broken she breaks their kneecaps enemies get an additional delay after breaking free buying you more time and dishing out some more break damage from ruan may this character sounds 
Oh, because her buff is an aura. So you would usually only run one character and have two people buff the same character. But with Ruan Mei, because she can both buff, both buff, both, then you can run two. Oh, dude, so I can run Zila Kafka? Oh, dude, that'd be sick. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, well, we're only halfway through her kit because for some reason they wanted to make her kit longer than a Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> I yeah, still dude. In high school, so I don't want to try and pronounce this, but basically, Ruan Mei gives your three non Ruan Mei teammates 10% speed for free. Like, literally, her existence just makes everyone move faster. That's insane. It's just really scary. Her talent also makes it so that when enemies have their weakness broken, she deals break 10 speed. 10% speed is and insane. And on top of her talent that gives you free speed, one of her traces gives allies, including herself, 20% break effect, and her other trace gives her a free 5 energy at the start of every turn. Ruan Mei is a charity for both your team and for horny people. Her technique is pretty <laughs> useful as well, because it's going to make it so when you enter battle, it'll trigger her skill without using a skill point right away. But it's even more useful in simulated universe, where all types from allies will break enemy time toughness upon entering yeah i don't know if i'm crazy about the sim uni exclusive buffs i don't think i like that at all I, I would prefer it just be useful everywhere but maybe it's because it's so broken it would just completely trivialize memory of chaos and pure fiction but whatever battle with an attack it's fine outside. i guess the amount of toughness you reduce depends on the amount of blessings that you have and the more blessings that you have the more toughness you're going to reduce and the more enemies you're going to break the break is going to be based off of ruan may's break damage if you're going to farm simulated universe this character is massively helpful where she really shines is in aoe that we can have bro. tons of breaks and dude they literally they with... need to change simulated universe and the fact they haven't done it yet is insane like nobody wants to spend two hours to get two relics from simulated universe like i don't know why they haven't auto played it already it is actually starting to piss me off i'm hoping they fix it in 2.0 but like sim uni grinding for relics is impossible bro i know it's not two hours it's more like 30 minutes though but 30 minutes for like four relics that's insane bro with multiple damage dealers and i'll show you what i mean in the team section but overall she's definitely one of the most consistently strong supports across the board and a ton of fun to play for talent priority i would recommend ultimate and skill first since the difference why not the auto attack bro how's she gonna deal damage i don't get it that's with her talent is only two percent speed it's worth it but it won't make that much of a difference at first but what about what about her damage you know, I'm going to be auto attacking a lot to be skill point positive. Why wouldn't I want to max that? So I sort of have a hoarding problem. Whenever I buy a product, I always keep the packaging just in case I have to make a return or sell it. And that's led to me keeping boxes on boxes from tons of years ago. Yes, I do need the box for my Pokewalker because what if I find it one day and I want to sell it online or something? Well, this extends beyond boxes too because I also do it in Gancha games. And I hope you're all relic orders like me because there's one set that I'm going to mention that nobody has used until now. But Thief set. But first, I'm going to talk about Four Piece Messenger of Hackers. That. which is my preferred set on Ruan Mei. Since oh, no. you usually won't speed tune as specifically in her teams, and the overall increase in speed is helpful. But with that said, many players will struggle to reach the break effect threshold of 180% yep. to get her max damage bonus. So if you struggle with that, you can either run 4-piece or 2-piece yes, for break effect bonus. Or you yes, can break sir! You the third option is to just not care about sets, and it's what I recommend if you're struggling to hit 180%. Nope. Ultimately, four piece thief, Ruan baby. Mei's personal Finally, it's basic good. attack doesn't really matter, and her speed is somewhat higher by default so you can just focus on any set piece with high break effect substats as for planar or i don't think 104 speed is really that fast innately but i guess there are some characters with 96 i just look at yukong's 107 i just consider that as the status quo but i guess it's just not being an idiot tournaments most of the time you're going to want to run talia for some more break effect and thus damage bonus Penagoni for damage bonus and energy regen broken keel for team crit damage or fleet for team attack if you're playing a preservation unit that prevents run may from taking hits and thus generating energy or if you're playing an ice DPS, you want to go with Penacone to guarantee that you can ultimate every three turns. The most important thing That's what is I have. a five-star energy regen robe and speed boots. I do have that. Effect substats. Ruan Mei doesn't actually need to be insanely fast. You just want to make her close to your main damage. Okay, so because I have Penacone and because I'm running a maxed out energy regen robe, I realistically should be able to three-turn all every time, right? And I'm running the, the memories of bullshit light cone. Mo most likely, right? No? MOTP S5? Why would I need MOTP S5? Only with S5 memories? You need S5? You gotta have S5 memories? Or what if I run COGS? Why the f*** would I need S5 memories? That's insane. Uh, you need Von Set ER Rope SS. COGS works. S5 COGS works well. Okay, maybe I'll just nerf Asta. 
Steeler's speed. She does want 180% break effect though, just to get the maximum damage bonus for your team, which means you'll need to get break substats. And if you have good break substats on a bunch of random pieces, that's totally fine. You just want to hit 180 break effect by any means necessary, except by giving up your speed boost. Good. And there's a light cone that kind of changes the situation on the energy regen rope, but I'll talk about that in a minute. For her body and sphere pieces, it just really does not matter what stats you give her as long as they have break effect substats. So here's a- But you probably want HP defense, so you're not dying one hit. A summary of her best sets and stats. The only okay. thing to make sure you do is put on speed boots and an ER rope. Speed boots will get her to 134 speed by default due to her base speed and traces, which is why you don't have to worry about those substats. And if you can't get 180% break effect on a set, just throw any random set pieces together to get to 180 or as close as possible. For substats, aim for break effect, and then you can worry about effect res just so that way she doesn't get stunned. Having a really rough time with break effect substats, but you're playing her with the meshing cogs light cone, you can also play a break effect rope. I will not be running a break effect rope. There's no way. Absolutely not. So this is probably going to be the easiest light cone choice of your life. Unless you okay. wail, because then for some reason your life and your choices get harder. I don't feel like that's how it should work, but it does with this character. Ruan Mei's light cone is really, really stupid. It's like adding another character to your team. 10 energy per wave isn't that's a what I said. deal, that's even with your fiction, you only have three waves at a time. But what's insane about it is that it's a 24% damage increase for three turns whenever you use the holder's ultimate. And if the user has 150% or more break effect, which your Ruan Mei should, you'll get a skill point back. And if you're using this light cone, Ruin May can give a 92% total damage what bonus at a time, counting the rest of her kit, That's which like results in such high damage that not even team. flex tape can save your enemies. But the main problem with her light cone is that you can't reliably three turn ultimate with it, meaning you won't have nearly 100% uptime on the light cone's effect, and Why you'll have not? less time with the resistance penetration from her ultimate. Bringing her light cone to a fight is like bringing a plane to a knife fight. Like, yeah, you'll win, but so will Bush in the following election. That's to say, while her Good signature one. light cone is broken, there are free-to-play light cones that are easy to access and can add more value in some situations just due to her getting more ultimate uptime. Those two light cones are Memories of the Past, which I would argue is her true best in Salt light cone. Yeah, but he's gonna say some bullshit like you needed an S5, bro. Which is like, how the f*** am I gonna do that? Since it gives 8 energy on her basic attack at S5 and also has- But I don't have it at S5, bro. Has a very high break effect stat and meshing cogs, which has the same energy effect at S5, but doesn't have the break effect. But it's a three star light cone, so everyone has it and has access to it. If you don't have her signature or memories of the past at at least S3, you're probably. Oh, S3? Oh, I have it at S2, bro. Oh, please. Is it on the banner? Is it, is it on the weapon banner? Surely it's on the, is it's on the weapon banner, right? Oh my god, it's not. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're gonna want to go with Meshing Cogs S5, just so that we can get the three-turn ultimate. Also, the energy from okay. these light cones is affected by energy regen stat as well. At the end of the day, you can spend poles on what you want to, but I had similar success with Ruan Mei on Memories of the Past S5 compared to her signature, despite it being crazy good as a light cone. And with that said, just due to how many enemies are in Pure Fiction, you can probably still three-turn ult there with her light cone. It just won't work in Memory of Chaos. Okay. If you don't have memories of the past, her signature light cone could be a pretty good pull. But for free-to-play players, you do have meshing cogs as a super solid option anyways. All of the other Harmony light cones don't even come close to these for their value they can bring to Ruan Mei, so I wouldn't bother with anything else. Next up, I'll give you guys some team building tips, and hopefully they'll help you make the most of your Ruan Mei. Okay. I wish she'd hold me like she holds her instrument. Ruan Mei is a very interesting. God, it's so sad. <laughs> thing is there's somebody out there where that's not a joke and they imagine themselves being that guitar interesting character she does things in a bit of a different way from all of the other characters that we have with the exception of asta because asta also increases your whole team's attack and your whole team's speed with by, her by ult. by abilities now, so. all work on all of your characters on your team except for herself with in my the speed buff but you know we don't talk about that and because of that she actually enables a different insane, kind though. of speed composition that we're not super negligible. used to seeing in high level play so today i want to show you guys some of those compositions and then also some just standard compositions that you can run with her as a regular support in. These aren't in any particular order or ranking. These are just some teams that I had fun with. So let's get started. This one's called More Jingun Buffs and Caked Up Warp Trotter. Tobaz and Numbi's release already made Jingun a better unit. That combined with the follow-up attack relics if you wanted to run two-piece, two-piece. Basically, he's had some new opportunities to do more damage. And Topaz and Numbi are also Bro, characters that are DPS supports, but also deal so a ton of 
Concerned. as hunt characters in single target. Toba has a very basic attack heavy unit. You don't necessarily God, have to use her so skills. Hot. And as a result, double DPS is going to blow my mind. Use his skill. Ronmei is an SP positive character. Ho Ho is an SP negative character, but uh, I mean that only that depends on how often you use her healing because she can actually be an SP positive character if you don't need her healing immediately. So all in all, you shouldn't really have skill point issues with this team. And Ronmei is going to buff the damage of Topaz and the damage of Jingyuan, which is going to effectively make your two DPS that you have on this team even stronger. And then Ho Ho also has the. You would want to use Jingyu because Ron Mei is buffing your damage and also giving you resistance. I just don't get that. But you don't really have all. attack buff, so Ho Ho is going to also help you with that as well. This is one of like, my favorite teams that like I've run with Ron Mei. Not necessarily because it's the strongest team, but just because it's a team that Jingle I found you, that I can really enjoy. I didn't play Tanto Bazzi Jingyu until I had think. Ron Mei, and now they just feel so much better to play. So speaking of the dual DPS team, now we can run Blade and Jinglu together with this even team seems more nuts. buffs than before. Blade and Jinglu was actually a combo that has been accessible for a while, but there was only one Bronya. We did have Pela, which could lower everyone's defense. Times super you, nice, uh, but Ron Mei's buffs are a little bit stronger than Pela's in most scenarios. Uh, obviously, there's, there's situations where that might not be true. But Ron Mei giving you up to 68% damage bonus, 25% resistance penetration, and some speed on top of that, and also better break efficiency and all that stuff. Obviously, this, she's going to be an amazing buffer for both Jing Lu and Blade. The damage bonus of both these characters is going to be insane. Jing Lu gets a ton of attack on her own, so attack buffs never did too much for her. They did help her. Like, obviously, attack buffs are good. More attack is always going to be good, but what she really wanted was some more damage buffs and some more crit buffs. And Ronmei doesn't have the crit buffs, but she does have the damage buffs. And Blade also is HP scaling, so he actually can use damage buffs a lot better than attack buffs as well. And we have a lot of attack buffers. But the reason you would play Bronya with Blade is because she had a damage buff. My and brain Ronmei feels like it's buffs, about so to explode. With Blade as well. You shouldn't have any SP problems with this at all. In fact, you might be overloaded on SP here. You can actually play any healer yeah, you want. Yeah, Luoja is nuts. Here and it for be skill point positive. As long as they're not skilling every single turn. I'm just and showing Blade, you I've also had really good experience with him using barely any skill points. Now, this team is like kind of. A dual DPS team, Maybe but not, I feel like, like my Jingliu uses a lot of skill points that pair with Bronya. And Argenti is one of the few characters that can actually decimate pure fiction in a giga fast manner. So if you're going into pure fiction and you have a lot of enemies that are weak to physical, I recommend Argenti and Clara. Runmei can buff both Clara and Bro, Argenti, and any hits that you like end up taking so on Clara fun, are also going to be giga buffed by Runmei, and then also Ho Ho as well. Clara, you basically never have to use her skill. You can use her skill, and it can be very strong, but you don't have to. Meanwhile, Argenti wants to use a skill all the time. You can swap out Clara for a another character if you wanted to like blade i'm just trying to showcase some different ways you can play different characters so now onto the single dps team comps jing is going to be one of the characters that benefits from ruan may the most if you play pela is and ruan may both DPS with Kanakori, be bad with you can get 20 percent damage bonus onto jinglu and then on top of ruan may's normal damage bonus you're going to have surely not 88 right? damage bonus on jinglu which is going to be absolutely freaking crazy and also she's my wife so i'm giving her i wonder if Shui again the healer is just for show you can play Ugh. a lot of different characters with this in fact you can play a really sp heavy healer if you wanted to an SP negative healer because Pela barely uses her skill. Run May barely uses her skill. Actually, she's really SP positive. Pela is really SP positive. Jinglu is not super SP heavy, so you can definitely use an SP heavy healer. And then lastly, I wanted to show one with Run May and Bronya. In the last team that I showed with Pela, some people might be wondering why if nobody uses her with Kafka. And honestly, it's up in the air. Depends shit? on the content. Depends on your build. The amount of damage bonus like, you're gonna Kafka get just from. Ron May Asher, what and is Bronya together is going to be pretty freaking crazy. And honestly, you can benefit a lot from defense shred. But if you wanted to, hypothetically, you could play Bronya and Blade together. You could play Bronya on Penacony for the 10% damage bonus, then also the 68% damage bonus from Ruan May. You're going to have a ton of damage bonus on Blade. It'll be super helpful. And then also, Bronya's going to help Blade move, hurt himself more, etc. That's also part of the point of this team, where every single time Jinglu attacks, Blade's HP is going to get lowered, which is going to help him do more follow up attacks. And that's part of the reason that team is so strong. This team is functionally yeah. similar, where you're going to get more attacks with Blade from Bronya, which means you're going to lower your HP even more. And then obviously Locha is just there because, you know, Locha is one of the better characters in the game, but you could replace Here, him. I'm going to give you a pro or... tip. If you just put a whole team of five stars together uh, and you have buffers, a DPSer and a healer, uh, the team works So just take four or five stars of each role and then put them in a team together and it will work. Just want to let everybody know that. Or abundance character yep. that would be fine because Blade is completely self-sustaining. One combo we probably won't see a lot right yeah, now, but like we may that. see a lot in the future when Dr. Ratio little, little, releases little, little is Welt and Ron May. Welt and Ron May work really well together because when Welt is able to break enemies or when you just get imaginary break in general, enemies get imprisoned and Ron May can extend that, essentially making it so you can run Welt as a solo preservation. Now, the problem with this is that Welt's ultimate ability doesn't technically count as a weakness break, it's just imprisonment. However, when Ron May actually activates her ice break afterwards, you have the opportunity to imprison them again before they recover and deal 
deal some damage to you. This means that if you break them with Imaginary and also have Welt's ultimate ready, you essentially have ways to not take damage between Welt and Ron May and then your Imaginary carry. The reason I didn't volunteer Dunhung Ill for this is because Welt takes a lot of skill points if you want to really make sure you can loop his ultimate, but the other way to play Welt is to just spam okay. his basic attack and make him really, really fast. Now, I'm not talking about 134 speed. I'm talking about like 151 plus, 170, 200, 5,000, a billion. Give him as many speed points as you possibly speed, can wow. because that will make it so we can get his ult back consistently while using his basic attack and hopefully not eat all your skill points. So that way you could actually play him with Dunhung. But yeah, I anticipate with Dr. Ratio, Ruan Mei, and Welt together, especially because Ratio works with debuffs and Welt has Dude, a bunch if I get of debuffs, a today, I'm gonna lose you should my be mind. able to prevent enemies from attacking you for basically the whole fight. One or two attacks might slip through, but as long as they're not all on the same person, this synergy will work really, really well. One last thing that I didn't really go yes, over is the possibility God. for Kafka teams to be buffed. Now, I haven't seen Math actually run on this, and honestly, I don't play a lot of Kafka teams typically, so Why? I don't think I'm the best person to consult on this. But with Runmay giving damage bonus and work. resistance penetration, it will mathematically buff dot characters, including Kafka and Gwenaifen. Now, make you work. might be wondering why I picked Gwenaifen. It's because I'm in love with her. Yep. Now, one thing I did want to talk about was... Um, how Bro, do you say her name? The I feel only... Like... Uh, the only team I gave a f*** about... Ah, oh, mother... I'll make it work. I'll make it work, and I'll make that shit work today. I will, and I will make that shit look easy. I will make that shit work today on my life. I think her name is is Juyi. Ju, Ju, I'm gonna call her Twitter. Playing Twitter and Ruan May together is a bit of an interesting functionality. Basically, Ruan May extends break and does extra break damage, and Twitter is able to break anyone with any weakness, regardless of whether they're quantum or not. That's just with her ultimate. And the more what? you can break enemies, the more stacks towards her follow up attack she can get. But the problem with Twitter and Ruan May is that Twitter's damage is not super. She can do that it, shit. So it's all right. It's you know it's pretty good. But part of her strength comes from being able to break anyone of any weakness and what that usually means is that when you break with her a lot of her damage comes from that break from that quantum well right. really extending that means that they're not going to get their toughness bars back as fast which means that her ultimate's not going to really get any value if you shoot it at someone that's already broken because it was extended by ruin may which means that in a way she's sort of anti-synergistic even though her entire kit focuses on break and break effect but she also has a weird synergy where if your entire point is to try to keep them from attacking she can also work one thing i'm experimenting on with twitter here is running her to dual dps comp with no healer or preservation and the concept of keeping everyone broken forever but i don't anticipate that it's going to go very well we may need some more units for that all in all run make can really just be slotted anywhere most places that bronya can be played run bro how are you gonna do how are you gonna do how are you gonna do a eight minute team example guide and then hit us with the oh you can just put her anywhere oh my god bro these guide makers man my brain felt like it was exploding the whole time i could feel my body temperature rising that whole explanation of my brain trying to process that shit and then i hit with a eh, it doesn't really matter do whatever man Ruan May can also be played, except Ruan May is an SP positive version of that. She's yeah. a very powerful character and can fit okay. into basically every team, but I did want to showcase some of the stronger teams that I tried out. And again, just to reiterate, any of the, the healing characters that you saw can be replaced with basically any other healers, except in teams where they are very SP negative and you need a fast Lulcha to just never use the skill button on. Next up, let's talk uh, about whale shit. Let, let's, let's talk about the poop that comes out of... Uh, never mind, cut that out. You know what team's gonna be fire? Jigliu, Ruan, May, Pela, and E6 March. I bet that team would be. F Let's yes. talk about these Eidolons because holy shit! What? Her E1 makes it so that when her ultimate is up, your team ignores 20% of defense. It's so f broken. The f As if Ruan May didn't give you the highest damage bonus in the game, speed buffs, break buffs, Dude, and the ability and to ignore resistances, they ult? gave her defense ignore with E1. At this point, I'm pretty sure Ruan May buffs filthy. everything in the game except for attack. Are you kidding me? E2 makes it so that all allies get a 40% attack buff when hitting enemies with their weakness broken. And let me tell you, as someone that's played Ruan May, that's it's insane. not hard to keep their weakness broken. Get more to cook to this so on Master Chef as soon as possible. E3 is an ultimate and talent level up, which is nice for the resistance penetration and speed. E4 is a break effect buff for Ruan May, so just a bit of a damage increase for her. I wouldn't rely on this Doesn't for her really damage matter. buff, though. E5 is a skill and basic level up, and E6 extends her ultimate field duration by one turn, which is making pretty good. it last three turns and letting you have 100% uptime on it if you run three turn ultimate. I feel like you. I feel like you don't really need the E6. I feel like E1, E2, and then she's good to go.
the past. It also increases our talents to break multiplier by a big margin, which makes our personal damage contribution a lot better. I want to make it clear, I'm a little biased because I only like shilling light cones that work super well on every single character in that category, or most characters in that category. And at the moment, Ruan Mei is the only one who can take advantage of the whole effect, at least most of the time. Every character can activate the damage bonus, but there's other Harmony light cones that are extremely hard to contend with. For example, Planetary Rendezvous at S5 yeah. gives the same damage bonus as Ruan Mei's and doesn't require an ultimate, just in exchange for the wielder being the same type as your DPS. Yeah. On Branya, you'd play But the Battle Isn't Over or Past and Fusure. And on most Harmonies, Dance 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 is pretty broken. There's a lot of other broken light cones as well. True. The bar is so high for light cones in the Harmony section that for characters that aren't Ruan Mei, 24% damage bonus is like the bare minimum. And with True. all of that considered, Ruan Mei can get a three turn ultimate loop and a ton of break effect with Memories of the Past. So getting our light cone almost feels like a trap when E1 and E2 are so strong. With that That's said insane. though, if you don't have Memories of the Past at at least S3 or higher, her signature light cone okay, can be a can, solid okay, way okay, to okay. get- Is it- Okay, genuinely. If I only have that at S2, which I do, only have it at S2, and then I have all this other bullshit, like, okay, I have it at S2, okay, look at five energy, but then I'm running the, look at this, look at this. I'm running energy regeneration on the rope. And then I have the two piece 5% energy regeneration that you guys can't see because I'm a bad streamer. Is that really not enough? S2 is fine. You need to use four piece break effect and break two enemies per alt cycle. Yeah, I can just do that. I'll make S2 work. I'll make it work. I'll make it. I'm not running Congress. I'll, I'll make it work gain some more damage even with less ultimate uptime. So if I were deciding between her signature light cone and E1, I would check to see if I have an S3 Memories of the Past. And if I don't have at least that, I might go for her light cone over Eidolons. But if I had S3 Memories of the Past, I'd probably go for E1, since you're basically just running a mini four-piece quantum set that works against any enemy, in addition to all of her other buffs. E2 is also I crazy since enemies stay broken for a really long set. time, but you know, like going all the way to E2 something? is rough. Remember not to swipe on this game though, it's more fun with the challenge in my opinion. Let me know which upcoming oh, character oh, you're dude, the most excited dude, for. Dude. Brax's videos are so goddamn good. And I echo that setup at the very end. This is the reason why I like watching God uh, guy videos before I pull anything. Or at least ones from Brax because they're actually fun videos. But for real, on my life, do not spend money on this game. It will, it will objectively make the game worse 1 million percent. It's good to know that Ruan May will actually at least be as good as I thought she was going to be. So I just have no idea what Reddit was talking about. I have no idea what all the people were saying. People were telling me she was going to be terrible. And I'm like, really? Where? But it looks like she's going to be busted. But the question is, how busted? Find out on my Twitch. Go follow and subscribe to Braxton's video. Best guides on YouTube.